All right, so we're still talking about graphing cubic functions day three, but we're actually not going to be graphing today. We're going to actually look at the graphs and go backwards from the graphs to the equations. So one of the things we want to do, is today's focus is writing the equation from the graph. So a general equation for the cubic function will be given. So they're going to tell us if we're looking for A or B. Um, we won't be looking for both at the same time. Along with the function's graph, we're going to give a specific equation by identifying the values of the parameters from the reference points shown on the graph. So they're going to give us some reference points. We're going to use those. We're going to plug values in. And we are going to write the equation. So looking at this first example here, it says g of x equals a times x minus h cubed plus k. That means we are looking for an a value. We're no, not looking for b today or for this problem. So the first thing you need to do is find that turning point, that middle value where it makes the turn. 90% of the time it will be in the middle. There is occasional that it's not, but you need to figure out where that vertex is, where it's making that turn. And in this case, it's making the turn at negative 2, 2. So negative 2, negative 2. This is our vertex. That means that's h and that's k. So we are going to plug those values into that equation that they gave us. So g of x equals a times x. It says h is negative 2, so it's minus a negative 2 cubed minus k. That double negative, that x minus 2, we need to make sure we take care of that double negative. It does become, in fact, a positive. Now, we only have one more value to find. And we can pick either point that they gave us. It doesn't matter which one you use, but you need to look at it and go, okay, I want to find a value. So I'm going to simply plug some things in. I know what H and K are. I'm going to plug a point in, and I should be able to solve for my A value. The book does this a little differently. Um, doesn't really matter. I like doing it my way. They like doing it their way. So let's plug in a value. We're going to pick a point. I'm going to use negative 1, 1. Why? Because it's pretty easy to use. So this is my y value, remember. So 1 equals a times x. We know that x value is negative 1 plus 2 cubed minus 2. Notice I have a new equation. The only variable in there is a, and I can use this to solve for a. So 1 equals a times negative 1 plus 2 is 1 cubed minus 2. All right, so order of operations says I do the cube first. Well, 1 cubed is simply 1. So 1 equals a times 1 minus 2. a times 1 is just 1. So now I have 1 equals a minus 2. To solve for a, I'm going to add the 2 to the other side. So I get my a value is 3, an easy peasy. Now, I know what a is, I know what h is, I know what k is. I can go back and finish writing my equation. g of x equals, I am going to plug in my a value of 3x, and it's a plus 2 because I already know that from here. Get my cube in there, minus 2. There is your specific equation for that graph. All right, so one more we're going to look at. This one, it looks sideways instead of up and down, so that means something's changed. This one, they have a B value to find and H and K. So again, look for the vertex, look for that turning point. 90% of the time, it's going to be right there in the middle. So my H, K is at 1, negative 1, that turning point. There are a few problems I know in the book where it's not in the middle. You just got to find that term, okay? So we're going to start. We say g of x equals 1 over b, x minus h, h is 1, so minus 1, cubed, plus the k value. Well, k is a negative 1, so I'm not going to put a plus minus. I'm going to just put the minus in there. Now, I can use anything I want to figure out what my b value is going to be. Um, personally, if it were me, 
I would plug in the value of 5, 0 because it's just easier to deal with. Okay? Um, you can use negative 3, negative 2. I know the book, again, shows a different method of doing this. I personally like to plug values in and just solve it. So I'm going to use 5, 0. That means I am putting in 0 for my y value. I get 1 over b. This is 5 minus 1. And that's all cubed minus 1. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this 1 over to this side. So I get 1 equals whoops, 1 over b. 5 minus 1 is 4. And that's cubed. Okay. So here's a little bit of the trickiness. To undo the cubing, I have to cube root both sides. You have a button on your calculator that does cube roots. Okay? So if you take the cube root of 1, it's like asking, what did I multiply times itself 3 times to get 1? Well, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So the cube root of 1 is 1. And I get 1 over b times 4. All right. So now, I want to get not 1 over b, but I want to solve for b. So I'm going to multiply this by b to cancel them out, and this by b. So that gives me b equals 4. There's several ways you can do that. You could divide out the 4 and then flip things over and whatnot. Um, as long as you're doing math legally, we're good. So now I'm going to write my equation, g of x equals, it says 1 over b, so b is 4, so I have to write that as 1 over 4, x, and it's minus 1 cubed minus 1. Your h and your k values are not going to change once you start that problem. So take good notes, we're going to practice writing some more tomorrow.